Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you here again for the second day of our final conference. Uh, in English, it's uh, called Learning by Doing, and in Lithuanian, Moko Sito Buleyu and Moko. It is the second, uh, it is the final conference of the second day, uh, which is held at the end of uh, teacher training programs, technology, and uh, the classroom, and uh, student learning, student centered learning in the remote classroom. I've made uh, the recording of uh, yesterday, so here you can scan it. I also posted it on uh, our uh, Facebook, so even after the conference, and I hope that I will be able to record uh, the second day and post it on our Facebook as well. Also for the participants, uh, we will try to send it by post, but if you don't find it in your email boxes, you will be able to go to our Facebook account, which is Valstibis Institutical Boot Centres, and for sure you will find this uh, QR code and download the presentations there. So, as I've already told you, This is the final conference of uh, our teacher training programs, which uh, were held in partnership with the British Council. So on behalf of the British Council and on behalf of the Public Service Language Center, we say a great thank you for all the participants who uh, a part of them participated in uh, 12 webinars uh, uh, of technology and the classroom teacher training program and uh, 30 teachers participated in student-centered learning uh, course uh, held by Joe Dale and today we are having the final conference. Now briefly, I will talk a little bit about the program today. So uh, till uh, uh, lunchtime, we will have a plenary session held by Joe Dale, who, who is uh, still the uh, lecturer of uh, our student learning, student-centered learning in the remote classroom lecturer. And he is going to give us uh, a webinar on exploring virtual reality with Google tools. After that, uh, he will give a short overview of the course, then we will have a break, and in the second part of uh, our today's uh, conference, we are going to have um, the teacher's presentations. Some of them uh, are Joe Dale students, uh, from the teacher training course and some of them are from other Lithuanian schools. So that will be a very practical hands-on part where when you can uh, uh, watch and see what other teachers are doing and this is our also goal to get as many ideas using even the tools we already used to but we hope that you will find some new ideas how to use them in other contexts as well. Uh, we are hoping to finish the uh, conference till, uh, till two o'clock. So even if our uh, presentations are a little bit longer, so presenters, please don't worry. Everything we will finish on time. And now I'm inviting Joe Dale to talk about virtual reality using Google tools in and out of our classroom. Now I am stop sharing and Joe, that's the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Astoricha. That's absolutely wonderful. Uh, I'd first of all like to thank uh, Astoricha for all her help and support in the last few months and particularly for putting on this virtual conference, for changing it from a face-to-face -face conference to a virtual conference in no time at all. 
And uh, I very much appreciate it. I'm sure everyone appreciates this as well. The fact that you're recording both the days and sharing it with everybody is just fantastic. So thank you so much for this opportunity. And um, just to clarify as well, the content I'm going to be sharing in today's session is completely different from anything that we've covered in the course. So it's brand new content. It's not something that we've done already, but it's absolutely lovely to see um, <clears throat> some of the teachers that were on the course that, that we did over uh, the, the, the number of weeks um, that we were together um, presenting today and um, sharing all their ideas. Uh, it's just it's wonderful. So thank you so much for this opportunity. So I'm going to be speaking for about an hour and a half, um, approximately. And uh, before I start, if I give you a little bit of background about myself, if that's okay. So um, I, um, I was a, a French teacher for 13 years. I taught at secondary school level for three years and then 10 years in a middle school um, uh, nine to 13 year olds on the Isle of Wight, which is where I, I live now. And I've been living here for 20 years. Um, uh, I've worked with all the major language associations in the UK. Um, I also normally travel around the world running training on the use of technology and languages as well as across the curriculum. Um, and, uh, but the, the bread and butter of what I do is working with language teachers. And uh, I've spoken at conferences and done training in places like Australia, New Zealand, North America, the Middle East, all over Europe. Um, I did come to Palanga um, last year and I had an amazing time in August. And of course, I would have loved to have, to have come back and hopefully next year that would be a possibility depending on how the, the situation uh, changes. But um, I've, I, I absolutely loved my trip to Palanga last year. First time I've been to Lithuania. And I was so delighted when I had the opportunity of, um, of doing more training albeit virtually, but I was delighted with how the course went. And, um, and there we are. Okay, so my, my contact details are on the screen there. If you're on Twitter and you want to follow me on Twitter, feel free to do so. I've recently surpassed um, 30,000 followers, which is a little bit crazy, really. But I have been on Twitter for 13 years. And particularly since the, um, since the pandemic started, uh, I've been working flat out helping people from uh, literally around the world on different um, tech tools and different solutions. Um, and different, uh, different uh, webinars I've been running. If you go to my YouTube channel, which is um, Joe Dale 100, Joe Dale 100, just search for that, I've just put that in the chat for you, then you will find uh, over 50 webinars in the series that I've been organizing called the Technology and Language Teaching Series, or TILT for short, plus many of my own uh, recordings, and I'm planning to publish this recording that we're doing right now onto my YouTube channel as well. My email address is underneath there, joedell.talk21.com. If you want any extra support with remote teaching ideas or hybrid teaching ideas or whatever it might be, get in contact with me. I would love to, to help you um, during, this, uh, during this pandemic. Okay, so this is what we're going to try and achieve um, in this session. There's a lot of information here, but it is all being recorded, so you'll be able to watch it back um, at a time which suits you. And I would love you to put comments in the chat. Um, as Astridja has said already, if you make sure, please, your microphones are all turned off, that would be fantastic. But um, what I would love you to do is to write comments in the chat. If you have a question for me, I've got my two screens here. So it means I can look at the chat while I'm speaking. If you could put the letter Q in front of your question and then write your question, it, it helps me to identify those um, uh, those um, statements which are questions and those which are just comments. Feel free to write comments as well, but for the questions, uh, if you could put a queue in front of this. So it's, it's, uh, it'll be interesting to see how much um, you've seen of these sorts of ideas already, if you've already played with Google Mind Maps or Google Tour Creator. But by the end of this, um, this presentation, I'm hoping we're going to have a lovely tour of Lithuania um, that you'll, you'll see in a moment, a virtual tour of Lithuania, which should be a lot of fun, I think. Okay, let's get started. Right, so the first uh, virtual reality um, app I want to talk about uh, from Google is one called Google Arts and Culture. Now, there is a Google Arts and Culture app, which you can just get from the App Store or the Google Play Store, um, which works in a very similar way to what I'm going to show you right now. So I'm just going to click on Exit. I'm just going to uh, maximize my screen. And then here, if I click here and I click on the link and then we can go straight to arts and culture like this. Right, so as you can see, this is what it looks like. Okay, so if I scroll down, you can see there's lots and lots of different ideas here. Okay, you can explore a virtual exhibition. You can see, um, 
ancient objects, lots and lots of different ideas. So let's imagine if we wanted, for example, to do a search like this. If I put a search in and I put in a search for Van Gogh, okay? There we are. So this has now come up. There we are. Can you see here? This is the, the very famous um, picture, Starry Night. So if I click on that, let's see what this does. All right, here we are. Okay, so here we are. Here's the picture. And if I just move that out of the way, there we are. Can you see if I zoom in, what I can do is I can see up close. Oh, yeah, I can see up close the actual sort of paint strokes of the of the screen, which is fantastic. Can you see? I'm, I'm, it's actually easier in a way when you're on a uh, when you're on a, a, an iPad, but it's fine. So as you can see here, I can scroll right in and I can see that the the paint strokes, and that's because in this particular um, yeah, can you see in this particular um, picture? The uh, camera that's a very powerful camera has been taken, uh, has taken this picture. And as a result of that, you're able to zoom right in and see exactly how it works, which is just fabulous, I think. If I just scroll down, yeah, can you all see how it works? Right. So if I, so as you can see, this has been taken from the Museum of Modern Art and it's fabulous. If I go back a second, um, if I were to go to this one, for example, Terrace at a cafe at night, which I've actually got at home <laughs> on my wall, which is fabulous. And again, you've got this picture here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how, how it looks when I'm on my iPad. So I'm going to click new share. And in Zoom, I can uh, click on the iPhone iPad option like this there we are and i'm just going to launch the app which is google arts and culture okay and now when i click new share iphone ipad and share okay i then have to just click screen mirroring and it should now come up in a moment. Let me just do this again. Hang on, two seconds. Should work. Okay, typically it doesn't want to work right now. Never mind. Never mind. Okay, I won't do that. I'll click new share and I'll go back to what I was just showing you. Right, I'm not sure why that wasn't working. But never mind. Okay, so. Um, what happens if you have the um, if you have the app version is you can actually go into virtual reality. You can have the image appearing in front of you on the on the screen. I'm not sure why that's not working. Anyway, never mind. It's all good. Okay, so uh, let's go back to here and go back to home. So let's look at some other ideas that you can do. So, for example, here if we went uh, here to this castle park. and click play can you see this is this is a, a 360 video let's actually let's go back a second sorry about this hang on um right let's try this one art galleries I think the, the, the website is looking slightly different from how I was expecting it, but it's fine. It's all good. So then here, right, so you've got these different um, art museums. So here, for example, if I go to this one, it lets me. Let's click here. Okay, normally, ah, here we are. Normally, there we are. Right, okay, phew. Right, so I'm in, the, I'm in the museum and you can see you've got the different um, arrows here. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to actually move through. Yeah, I think they've redesigned the website. That's the issue, right? Can you see? So I can actually move through the art gallery 
using virtual reality and I can then look at an individual picture and what have you. So in a languages context, what you could do is you could obviously send the students to a particular place and then you could then ask them to describe an individual picture or you could do directions, how to get from one picture to another picture, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I think there's a lot of room for language practice here and it's abs this is absolutely brilliant for, uh, for culture. Okay, so if I just go back, let's do another one. If I go back to the home page, just have another quick look. So um, right here it says you can explore the castle in 3D. Okay, so it's just going to load up now. And there we are, can you see? So again, there are these photographs that have been taken and you can explore them using virtual reality in 3D. So again, that could be the vehicle for language work, as it were. That's the idea. Hopefully everyone can see the screen okay. So that's just a, like a very, very quick insight in how you could use um, the Google Arts and Culture website or app. And I just think it's fantastic for promoting culture. And as a result of that, you can then bring in the language as well. Uh, as part so there's there's huge numbers of things that you can do here uh here for example if we go to this sagrado sagrado uh, familia okay so this is a uh that's a very famous um theater in italy if i remember correctly uh you've got all these other places here to explore um it's just amazing it's absolutely amazing if we wanted to for example to go to uh the palace of versailles there we are you can actually explore through the palace so again, I think this is fabulous for sort of language work. You know, what can you see? Where are we? Who lives here, etc. Yeah, talk about things in the past using the perfect tense, for example. And then you can see there you've got lots of little thumbnails at the bottom. So if you're describing a house, you could describe the Palace of Versailles. There's a big mantelpiece here. On the mantelpiece, there is a clock and two vases, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So lots and lots of fun, I think. Right, let's go back to my presentation. And that's the first one that I wanted to show you. Okay, let's carry on. Right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at Google Earth, which um, I'm a big fan of. Um, and as part of that, we're going to look at the Voyager option so I'm just going to click here. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just going to launch uh, Google Earth. Okay. It does take a little bit of time for it to load, for it to load, but that's the beauty of doing things live, right? So as you can see uh, here, we've got the option which is Voyager. So if I click on that. What happens is you've got these different items here saying nature, games, layers, street view, culture, travel, education. If I scroll down, you can see there's lots of different things we can explore. So for example, if I wanted to go to uh, crab migration on Christmas Island, sounds fascinating. If I click on that, what will happen is it will now take me to this page and then I can click explore. Okay. And what happens is some very, a very clever person has put together a tour for us for us to explore uh, different aspects of Christmas uh, of, um, of the Christmas Island. So you can see here that bottom right of the screen, you've got seven different scenes, if you like, that we can explore, but we're in street view at the moment. So we can be looking around here and again, for language work, I could be asking everybody to tell me what they can see. What's the weather like? Where are we? Et cetera, et cetera. And then if we wanted to as well, we could click on the arrow and we can actually travel a little bit in the, uh, along the beach here. Okay. And you can see on the right hand side, it's got some text, uh, which has been written about Christmas Island. If I now click on the next option, scene number two, we're now going to meet the red crab. Okay, 
So now we're going somewhere else. And there we are. Look at that. Okay. So again, for language work, you could say, okay, what can you see? I can see lots of red crabs. Ugh. Fantastic. Okay. And then again, you've got some text here. If we go on to the next one, we then learn about the migration of red crabs. Like this. There we can, uh, as you can see there. So it's really trying to bring the language to life, I think. And of, of course, this is not designed for language work, but I think it lends itself really nicely to language work, as well as other subjects like geography and what have you. Journey to the beach. And so on and so forth. So lots of red crabs here. Wow. Incredible. And then let's go to the next scene. Okay, breeding of the red crabs. So information about that as well. Amazing. And then got another two to go. Spawning of the red crabs. More information there. And last but not least, the wildlife on Christmas Island. So you can see how, how engaging it is, the way that you've got this virtual reality uh, tour of um, all about the lives of the red crabs and, uh, and what they get up to. So that's just one example. Now, if I were to go back to Voyager, you can see there are lots of other things here which we can explore, all of which, as you can see here, are in English, which is great, but it might be that you want to explore these ideas in a different language. And then how do we do that? So if I show you a little trick which I've come across, which is the following. Uh, here, there's a, a website which I found, which I'm gonna click on right now. And that gives me access to a Google Sheet, which is here, okay? And it's got lots of different links here, I don't, know, I don't think it's got Lithuanian, let me just check. No, it hasn't got Lithuanian, but let's imagine we wanted to explore um, Google Earth Voyager using French. So I would click here, and I would click here where the link is, okay? And what will happen now, it will, it will open up Google Earth again. And now when I click on Voyager, you'll notice that everything is in French. So now, for example, if I scroll down, let's see if we can find the same tour again, or a similar tour. Let's have a look. I'm not sure if we've got the same tour here. But, um, okay, let's have a look at this, um, Birds of uh, Paradise. So let's click here. Yeah, and it's all in French. Okay, so again, if you were teaching French, for example, you would be able to go on a tour and all the text here is in that language or whichever language you choose from that uh, spreadsheet, which again, I think is, is, is fantastic for language work and it just brings it all to life. So these are tours which you can't create yourself. These are tours which other people have created and are available on Google Earth in the Voyager option. But uh, later on, I'm gonna be showing you a tool called Google Tour Creator which will allow you to uh, build your own customized tours. So there we are. So that's giving you a little flavor of how this works. Hopefully that's nice and clear for everyone. And you can see the potential of how this can work. Let's see if I can just go into Google Street View. If I just drop in there. Ah, okay, so it's, is it, I'm, I'm sure you can see it's saying Street View is not available. That's because it's in a very sort of mountainous terrain. But you can see, You've got different um, uh, text information about the birds of prey that live, uh, birds of paradise, sorry, that live in that particular location. Let's go into, yeah, I think in probably in all of these, we won't be able to go into Street View. But let's just try one more time. Yeah, no, it's saying Street View is not available, which is fine. Okay, so that's giving you a little bit of an idea on how this would work. Okay, let's go back here. So if you're interested in using Google Earth, you can use Google Earth, Google Earth for lots of things. In the course that we did with Flipgrid, I was showing everybody how you can use the um, uh, I'm feeling lucky option, which is here, this one. So if you click here, what happens is it will basically take you anywhere in the world. So if you were then, say, screen recording your screen, as we're doing right now with Zoom, but if you're using something like Flipgrid, for example, 
then um, we're taking, in this case, to uh, Finland. And I could then dra drag and drop the Pegman into the point there. We could then go straight into Google Street View. And I could be asking questions in the target language. OK, what can we see? Where are we? Which country are we in? What's the weather like? And then we can then click again on I'm feeling lucky. Or in French, j'ai de la chance. And then we'll go somewhere else. So this time we're going to Indonesia in a volcano. Wow, OK. I'm sure you won't be able to do Street View in a volcano. Let me just try. I'd be very surprised. But again, you could be describing, asking the, the the, tu the students, yeah, no, no, no information there. Asking the students what they can see, etc. So that's giving you a little bit of an insight on how you could use um, Google Earth in the languages classroom. Okay, let's carry on. Right now, um, some very clever people have put together some uh, Google Sheets, which have got other uh, multilingual versions of the types of voyages which I've just shown you. So if I click on this link here, I can show you this live. Okay, don't forget I'm sharing the whole presentation with you as well. So you'll be able to see that um, later on. You can see that at the bottom here of the screen, it's got different languages. We've got, for example, English, French, German, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, Japanese, and Hindi. So if I were to just to scroll along, you can see that you've got lots and lots of different languages and different tours. So let's go to, for example, French again. And if I just scroll down, I'm going to show you my favorite one. There we are. Can you see it says Beatlemania? So, or La Beatlemania. So if I click here, what should happen if it works? Let's just try again. There we are. What should happen is it will open up Google Earth. It will display this in French for me. Okay, and can you see? So this is all in French. So if, if I was teaching French, I could talk about um, the different important historical places in the, in the life of the Beatles story, okay? So here, for example, we've got the Cavern Club, which is just about to hit, appear. So I could say, okay, you see you've got some text on the right-hand side there. Um, or you could just use the, um, the, the uh, you could just ask the children to describe who on their level, describe what they can see. You could say, okay, so how is this person feeling? How is this person feeling? What are they saying? What can they see? Where are we? What's the weather like? Are we in the town? Are we in the village? Okay, next we can then go on to the next place in the Beatles story, which is. Penny Lane, I think this one. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is Penny Lane. So again, if I drag and drop the little man here, we'll then go in. There we are. There we are, Penny Lane. Yeah, can you see? So then I can then scroll around and I can say, okay, so what can we see? There we are, Penny Lane. I can even travel down Penny Lane if I really want to like that, and I can see the sign, can you see? So again, we can say, okay, so uh, talking about the history of a band, and then you could create the same idea, but using uh, Google Tour Creator, which we're gonna look at later on. This is the, the club in Hamburg, where they started, first started playing all those years ago. Okay, so again, you could uh, talk about, you know, the language which is here, see where we are. Some authentic graffiti there, there we are, um, et cetera, et cetera. We'll just do another couple of these. Now we're going to the Ed Sullivan Theatre, which is the first place that the Beatles played in the States um, on a televised, televised performance, okay? So again, here we are here. So you, you get the idea, you can see how it works. So it's just try, it's trying to bring the language to life by choosing relevant content for the the students to access and I think Google Earth is absolutely brilliant for that let's go to the next place this is I think also in the States isn't it by the looks of things let's have a look so this is going to be Shea Stadium I think it is let's just wait for the text to come up 
being a little bit slow today, I think the internet, but it's all good. So let's drag, oh, Hollywood Bowl, right, that's right, the Hollywood Bowl. So then we're going to go in, we're going to experience what it's like being in the Hollywood Bowl. There we are. <laughs> Not quite how it was in the 60s, but never mind. So again, you can see that idea. And then we just do another one or two. Okay, and then here we've got. Okay, yeah, so when they went to um, India with the uh, Ashram Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, let's see if we can go into here. Is that going to go into Street View? Yes, it's going to go into Street View. Okay. So very different for what we've just seen. Perfect. So you could, again, you could you could say, okay, so what is this lady saying on her on her phone? What can we see here? What are these? Et cetera, et cetera. So you've got the idea. So I just think that's it's a brilliant way of bringing the the content to life. So those are lots of multilingual versions that you can find. And don't forget, I'm sharing the whole presentation with you. Right. The next thing I wanted to show you is uh, changing the language in Google Maps. Okay. So, for example, if I um, come out of here and I maximize the screen and I go to, let me just close some of these tabs because I've got lots of them open. There we are. Right. If I go to Google Maps like this, okay, and then I do a search for Buckingham Palace. How very English of me, Buckingham Palace. Okay. And there we are. We've got Buckingham Palace. And I want to work out how to go from Buckingham Palace to the Houses of Parliament. So I click Directions, like this, and I put in Houses of Parliament. Okay, like that. There we are. How's the parliament? Right. And I want to see how I can walk from one place to another. As you can see, there we are. So I can go from here to here, which is great. But let's imagine I wanted to have this in a different language. What you can do is you can click on the three lines here. And if you scroll down, you can see it says language. So I click on language. You've got all these different languages to choose from. So again, if I wanted, for example, to choose uh, French, okay, all of a sudden it's all in French. So, for example, if I wanted to try this option here, you can see that all the uh, directions, instructions are all in French in the target language. So, in other words, what you could do is you could, if you're practicing uh, directions, um, how do you get from one place to another place? then you could use this authentic resource and change the language so that it was then available in that language. And then obviously you could take a screenshot of this. You could then use some sort of tool like uh, Loom or Screencastify to record your screen while you're describing the, uh, the movement. Or if you wanted to go into Street View, then you could do that. You could uh, start off here, go into Street View, and then you can actually, well, in this case, because we're actually in um, the uh, in Buckingham Palace here, you can actually explore in Buckingham, Buckingham Palace. You can't do that with that many places around the world, but you, oh, you can't go there. <laughs> but you, again, this is just fantastic. And then you can then travel your way through if you wanted to and have a look around Buckingham Palace. Okay. Awesome. Right, so that's an idea, a quick idea around changing the language in Google Maps. Right, let's go on to the next slide. Okay, so uh, here's a, a blog post which I found, which gives you lots of ideas of um, places that you can visit using Google Maps in a similar, similar way to what I've just shown you. So if I click on this link, it will then take us to different places. So you can see you've got places like um, the Colosseum, uh, Pass of Versailles, which we just had a quick look around, uh, Everest Base Camp, Stonehenge. So just to give you a flavor, if I click on here on the link on the title for the Colosseum, 
it will now allow me to go straight into the Colosseum in Rome, which I have actually personally visited a couple of years ago, which is amazing. But as you can see here, you can get a, a, a feel for what it's like being here. And again, you could use this for language work. What can you see? Who lived here? How old is this building? Where is it? And again, as with other things, we can use street view and we can travel around and have a look around while we're here. Okay, if we then go back to, uh, sorry, if I go back here, should I say, go back to the link. There we are. Let's go a bit further down. Right, if we go to Stonehenge. Now I can remember because I'm reasonably old now, I can remember actually being able to go into Stonehenge and actually be in the stones and look uh, to be uh, in the in the circle and see the stones up close in the 1980s but you've not been able to do that for many years now because uh, people are worried that uh, the stones will get damaged if um, that were to happen so now you can't get anywhere near the stones but using virtual reality you can actually get you know up close and personal with the stones and see exactly what they look like which is just wonderful and I'll just show you one more one let's this time we're going to go to the white house so we've been to buckingham palace let's go to the white house and you can now travel around the white house and see what that's like so again for language work i just think this is fabulous as a way of practicing you know usual context but in unusual way so or usual content should i say but in unusual way so normally you know in a language course you'll be describing a house but would you describe the white house and why not and then you can as, as, as i'm showing you you can travel and be very nosy and look through different rooms etc etc there's certain places you can't go but you can see you know what i'm trying to do here okay let's carry on right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you google my maps now um, I don't know if you've seen Google My Maps before. Essentially, the difference between Google My Maps and just normal Google Maps is that Google My Maps allows you to create your own uh, map with your own pins and your own places that you want to visit. So this is not well. It is well. It's not virtual reality in the sense um, that you can do like a tour when you're moving from place to place, but this is like a 2D version. So this has been around for quite a long time, but um, I'm going to show you how to make one from scratch. So I'm going to come out of my presentation, maximize the screen, close a couple of these tabs quickly, and then I'm going to go to Google My Maps like this. Okay. There we are. Okay. Now, as you can see, I've done one or two maps about a place called San Carlo Guido, which is exactly what I'm gonna do right now again. So if I just give you a flavor of how this works, if I click create a new map here. Okay, and what happens is, this will now come up here, and I'm going to give my map a name. So I'm gonna click where it says um, map title, and I'm gonna call it, oh, San Carlo. Guido. Now, if you haven't heard of San Carlo Guido, it is a place in uh, Brittany, in France, where when I was a French teacher, we would go every year for five days and um, the children would practice their French and it was in incredible. Now, I've written this um, as the title there, but in the description, I could write this in the target language if I wanted to. But I'm just now going to click Save. And then in the search box here, I'm going to do a search for San Carlo Guido. Like this. Okay. Right. And here we are. Now, you can see that one of the options here is add a marker. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to click there. That's right. And then can you see my mouse has been turned into a little cross? And I'm going to click now where the green pin is. And this is point one. So this is the first uh, item that you're adding into your map. So I'm going to now call this Sanka Lugido. Okay. 
click save. And again, actually, before I do, before I click save here, I could write a description. So I could say, for example, every year we could you turn off your microphone, please? The person that's got their microphone on. Every year we went to San Car in Brittany like that okay and then click save but before we do that we can also click on the add image or video option and you can upload your own image or what I would recommend in this situation is click on Google Google image search and now I'm going to do a search for Sankar Yidu and click search okay now what's going to happen is all these different images come up and I can now choose one for example this picture here and then click select now as you can see there oh, the image is now there and I can click save so I've added my first um, pin with my first image so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do another search so now I'm going to put in uh, Dinon uh, and in fact, I'm going to put in Dinan Rue du uh, Jésual, which is a famous street in uh, Dinan, which is a medieval town. And normally after our long journey on the first day, we would then on the second day, we go to Dinan and we would uh, walk down the medieval uh, street of Rue du Jésual and we would um, buy ice creams and what have you. So now I'm going to click on the pin here. And I'm going to click here and I'm going to write Dino. I would then say we uh, visited Dino and bought ice creams. Okay, then click the picture, put in the, the, uh, the search and find a picture. So here, for example, that's a really nice picture and actually this one is even better there we are click select wait for the picture to appear there we are and click save right we've now got our two pictures right let's add another one i'm now going to add matignon so let's do that there we are i click here i put in a little marker matignon and then I would say, we went to the local market in Matignon. The children bought pancakes or crepe, should I say. Okay. Right, then again, you click the camera, you do a search like this. Okay, and then we haven't got the market there. Let's see if I put in market if something comes up. There we are, perfect. So I've got this image here. I click select and I click save. Okay, we'll then put in Mont Saint Michel. Okay, click the pin, add the marker. Mont Saint Michel. Uh, one of the favorite trips on the visit was going to see Mont Saint Michel. Okay, again, take a photo. Do a search. Like this, find an image. There we are. Let's choose this one. Click select and save. Okay, I'll do one more. We'll put in Dina in France. There we are. Click the pin. Click here. Dina. The bought ice creams again in Dina to practice our 
French. Okay, take a picture. You can add a YouTube clip as well, but I normally just stick to pictures here. So we'll put in Dina. Click search. There we are. Okay, find the picture. Let's go for that one. I love this picture. It's great. And click save once the picture comes up. There we are. And save. And there we are. We've done it. So that's all we've had to do. We've got our five different pins. And now what I would recommend is click on preview like this. Okay. So we're practicing our writing by describing the different areas. And then what you can do is you can click on each one in turn. So if you were, for example, using a screencasting tool such as uh, Loom or Screencast-O-Matic or Screencastify or Zoom, which is what we're using right now, you can then record your screen. I can see we've got a, a question. Ah, your, my, my camera is, no, my camera is on, I think. Is it not on? I think my camera is on. I'll tell yes, you what camera's yes, on. Oh, it's sorry. on. I'm sorry. So yeah, I'm sorry. So mine is on, but um, that's right. R Ramida has asked everyone to turn their cameras off. That's fine. Sorry. Apologies. Right. So yeah. So uh, Irma has asked, is my, my maps available just online when it is saved? Yeah, you need to be online for it to work. I don't think you can have a my map which is offline. So you need to be online for this to work. And I think I'm right in saying you'd have to create the my map using the browser on a PC but you could um, access it on an iPad once it was ready. Okay. So what I'm suggesting now, not only is this good for practicing the written language, but then if you record your screen while you're speaking, you can practice speaking as well. So if I click on San Caligido, what happens is this comes up, you can see the image that we've added and you can see the description that you've added as, uh, as the student. Okay. We can then go back and click on the next one. So I could be saying, for example, we visited Dino and bought ice creams in the target language. Yep, go to the next one. We went to the local market in Matignon, the children bought pancakes. Go to the next one. One of the favorite trips on the visit was going to see Mont Saint-Michel. And then we could talk about what we did at Mont Saint-Michel. And the last one, we bought ice creams in Dina to practice our French. So that's the idea. So you're using um, Google My Maps to create a customized map which allows you to promote culture, practice writing, and practice, practice speaking in the target language. Hopefully that's nice and clear for everyone to see what I've done. And now if I want to share my map with you all that I've created, I can uh, go back here uh, and I can click share and I can click, uh, duh, 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 hang on, is that right? I need to, let me just go, hang on. If I click here, map, duh, 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 duh. If I could, uh, now let's click share. Let's try this. So if I click share and I click um, embed on my site. Okay, I need to make it. That's the issue. I need to make it. Per, I need to make it public. The other thing that I can do, so I'd be able to get the link and then share it that way. The other that other thing that I can do is I can actually uh, make um, uh, this so it's a collaborative map. So for example, here as you can see here, it says share. If I click here, I can uh, share this link, <coughs> excuse me, with other people. I can click enable link sharing and um, I can click copy. And now I should be able to share that in the chat with you. So you can then click on that and you'll be able to um, have a look at that. But you can also have a collaborative map whereby you're all uh, working on it together which uh, I'll just have a look again. Da, da, da. If I click on drive sharing. Yeah, there, there we are. I clicked on drive sharing. <coughs> I can change this from anyone on the internet with this link can view. I can change that with anyone on this, uh, with this link can edit. So in other words, I could create a map, share it with um, some students, and then they could populate the same map. So I've seen, for example, in webinars, some people have, have shared um, uh, the, the whole world through my map, uh, Google My Maps, with uh, the attendees, and they've all put a little pin to say where they are in the world, which is quite a nice idea. So that's how you would do that. So there we are. That's uh, Google My Maps. If I now go back to my presentation, 
and I'm going to give you a few more examples of how this can be used. Okay, so here, for example, you can see uh, there's some, a few suggestions. So, for example, I found this um, this uh, this web page on the internet, and again, you, you're going to get the whole presentation. You can see it. So, you can see, for example, that the teacher that created this is suggesting that in an English class. Students can map um, Homer's Odyssey and then add thoughts, evidence from the text, justification for whether or not the places that they mark are accurate. So if you're doing any sort of storytelling, you will be able to um, use Google Maps, uh, Google My Maps in order to sort of tell a story or the historical places. So if you were teaching history, that would be amazing. If you were doing a, a work of literature, you could describe the different places um, on how to, how to, to put this together as well. Uh, again, the next one, students studying a foreign language can create virtual tours, which is what I've just suggested. Uh, foreign countries and cities, they can add a description of the target language on each pinned location, which is literally what I've just done. Younger students in elementary school could read a story such as hottest, coldest, highest, deepest, and find each location, which is similar to the first idea. But for younger ones, the pins on the maps could include a summary about their pinned location based on the reading in the book. Uh, students in history class can create a historical map that tracks the movements of nations during battles and wars such as the US Civil War or World War II. Um, and there we are. So just lots and lots of ideas. Thank you so much, Diana, as well, for your lovely comment there. This is yeah, thank you so much. And don't forget, Diana, I'm recording this. You'll be able to watch it back as well. So hopefully that's given you a few ideas on how you can use Google My Maps. And the fact you can customize that content is just brilliant. Now, um, uh, a lady in the States, the US, is uh, name is Heidi Trude. And she was the first person who really inspired me on how to combine my maps with um, Screencastify. So I was talking about being able to record the screen and then upload it to Flipgrid. Now Flipgrid, I'm sure all of you know about, but Flipgrid had a competition uh, last year called App Smash Madness. They've actually done uh, the same uh, competition this year as well. Um, and I've watched some of the videos for that, but I haven't gone through all of them yet. But this one actually won the whole competition, like a worldwide competition, and from a language teacher, which is brilliant news, I think. And I'm going to show you the video right now. It's only about three minutes long, but it just gives you a flavor on how Heidi is combining Google My Maps with Screencastify. Now, with Flipgrid, you've actually got screen recording built in now, which you didn't have then. So you actually don't need the Screencastify element. You can just do this idea with My Maps and Flipgrid. So let's click on the a link and I'll just play the video and you'll see how it works. Here we go. Everyone, my name is Heidi Trude and today I'm here to present to you my epic app smash of My Maps, Screencastify and Flipgrid. The first tool I'm choosing to use in this app smash is My Maps. My Maps allows students to create a unique map with map pins, images and videos. Screencastify allows students to create a virtual guided tour of their town using the map they created in My Maps. So that's step two. And then tool number three is Flipgrid, which allows students to share their voice and their tour of the town with the world. The project that I designed is a collaboration with my partner school in France. The students created tours of their towns in French and in English to be shared with each other. The students were then asked to reply back and forth to each other, describing their towns and any questions that they had. Here's what it would look like. The audio is, is, is actually quiet, on, uh, not on purpose, but it is just is quiet. So don't worry if you can't hear the audio because it's, it's very quiet, but you get the idea. The children are making their different tours and sharing it with their partner school in France. And then the students also received replies back. And here's an example of what that reply looked like. Again, the audio is very quiet. Don't worry. I live in Algeria and uh, I will go to Gaza High School. The impact on the project and the students was amazing. The students not only had the chance to show their towns, but they also were able to share their voice to describe their towns. 
the students gained a global perspective and they were able to see how their towns were similar or different from their peers in France. The app Smash allows the students to share what is meaningful to them and to make the global connection. The students are taking their learning outside of the four walls of the classroom, which is so important. We're taking it beyond what we do in the school. And I can easily see the smash of Google My Maps, Screencastify, and Flipgrid being used by teachers in all subject areas, whether you're doing a book review, whether you're looking at events in history. There's so many possibilities. So again, this is Heidi Trude with an amazing app smash of Flipgrid, Screencastify, and Google My Maps. Thank you. And there we are. Okay, so let me come back to my presentation. And thanks to Heidi for that fantastic uh, video and congratulations for her winning the global uh, Flipgrid App Smash Madness competition back in 2019. Uh, this is a similar idea. Well, it's the same idea, should I say, from another educator. This is from uh, the EdTech Awesomeness uh, website. And again, uh, if I click on the link here, just give you a quick flavor. This teacher is going through the same idea, essentially, how to combine Google My Maps with uh, screen recording, uh, again, a language teacher. So she's doing uh, a trip of Paris and then she's describing, you know, this is a lady called Melanie Zolnia uh, describing how to add different elements uh, around the city of Paris, like the Arc de Triomphe, etc. Same sort of idea. It's just very, very nice, I think. Okay, let's go back and carry on with the rest of the presentation. Right, Air Pano. So I'm going to just show you this live. Uh, let's click here. So Airpano is a, a website which allows you to access photos and videos, which are 360. There are some that you that you can pay for if you want to. I'm not suggesting anyone pays for anything here. Um, this is, um, uh, we've, we've done a search for Mont Saint-Michel. And here, if I click on this link here, it will give me like a helicopter view, can you see, of the Abbey at night. So again, exploring a 360 photograph. I can then click on the right-hand side here and I can have another view. Okay, I don't know if you know, but this is all quicksand here. So I, when we used to go to Mont Saint-Michel, it always used to fill me with horror seeing uh, uh, tours going, going on, the, on the, uh, the sand. Uh, I never saw anyone sink, but it was always very worrying to me because I, I, I was always told it was, there was quicksand there. Uh, there we are, so another view of, um, uh, of uh, Mont Saint-Michel. Let's do a search for Lithuania. I've not actually done this, so I don't know if we're going to have to see any pictures. Let's see, Lithuania. Let's see if anything comes up. Ah, here we are. So if we click here. Okay, and then we've got a 360 picture here. You've got some music as well. So if you want to mute the music, you just do that. There we are. There we are. We've got the Baltic Sea Beach near Nida. Fantastic. Wow, what a photograph. That's amazing. Yeah, so you can see how, how that's working. And then here again, you've got different views. So I can click here, for example. This will take me to another place in Lithuania. And all of these places are all accessible via the Airpano website. So again, you can really nicely include a bit of virtual reality within your lesson content. So again, here, you could, if you're talking like about your area, you could describe the area through this photograph. Not quite as adaptive as Google Street View, but you get the idea on how it can work. There's also 360 video as well. So just to give you an idea here, for example, this one here, if we want to go to, to the Bahamas, we can click on here and we can watch a quick video, which is a 360 video. Let's just have a quick flavor of this. Shark feeding the Bahamas. The shark feeding is a form of ecotourism. You can see the marine creatures in their natural habitat, not in an aquarium. So you get the idea again, you could find a video that you liked and then you could do some tour um, around that or description. Let's go into a volcano in Indonesia. Let's wait for this to come up. There we are. So we've got a lovely 360 photograph of a volcano just wonderful absolutely wonderful okay so that's air pano completely free um you don't have to pay for anything at all you can just use it for your your language work okay now google expeditions 
is another app which uh, from Google which allows you to visit different parts of the world and to have uh, like a, uh, a 3D tour of, the, of that place. The example I've got here is uh, Notre Dame. Uh, Google Expeditions is an app which only works on iOS or on um, Android tablets or phones. Uh, because I'm on my desktop right now and I tried to share my screen earlier, it didn't work for some reason. I'm going to just skip this now, but just download the app. You can visit different places, but you can't create your own tour within Expeditions. But what you can do, which is what I'm going to show you in a second, is how you can make what's called a tour in Google Tour Creator. And as long as you're logged in with the same Google account, the tour that you make in Google Tour Creator will then appear under My Tours in the Google Expeditions app. So it means if the children had a mobile device, they could uh, uh, go through it using virtual reality, or if they're lucky enough to have a, um, a, a 3D visor or a Google Cardboard, they could put their phone in the Google Cardboard and they could then visit the, the, the place um, in an immersive way to bring the language to life. Uh, here are some uh, examples of different Google Expedition tours. Again, you've got the links here. If I just give you a quick flavor, um, all you'd have to do is just click on the links here and they will take you to the different places that you want to go. So just to give you an example, if you wanted to go to the seven wonders of the world and click on this tour here and it will now come up on the screen. Okay, in a second, there we are. So we've got the Taj Mahal here and in the Taj Mahal, you can see you've got different um, uh, what are called uh, points of interest. So if I click there, for example, you've got some text here, some text here. If I click on the next one, you've got some more text, the next one, and so on and so forth. If we wanted to then go to the, to the next uh, scene, we would click here. So the next one is the Great Wall of China. So if I were to click here, it will then give me some information about the Great Wall of China. But again, this is content which you can't edit you can't add to because this is in Google Expeditions, but I'm going to show you how you can make your own. Right, so, and this is using this website right now. So I'm just gonna go through these slides and then I'm gonna show you live how it works. So it's called Google Tour Creator. It's completely free, but you do need to have a, a PC, a laptop, a Mac to do this. You can't create a tour on an iPad or on a phone, but you can access it once it's been created using the Google Expeditions app or the link um, from the tour um, as well, which I'm gonna share with you later. So that's, the, that's the, the link underneath to access this. But I'm just gonna go through the presentation now. Um, I was really inspired by a friend of mine uh, whose name is Chris Hart, who used to live in the Northeast of England, but has now been in Melbourne, Australia for the last eight years. And he taught me a lot of these tricks on how to make Tour Creator using Google. He's got his own dedicated website for this, which is here. I'm giving you all the links in the, uh, the slides presentation. And we actually asked Chris to do a technology and language teaching webinar for us, or TILT for short, as I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, which he called Beyond the Languages Classroom with Google Tools. He also did one for, for um, Google in Australia for Google for Education during the lockdown. And um, uh, he does a fantastic job in describing how to make your own tour. And then on the left-hand side, there, at the top left, you've got um, another group of Google uh, educators, including uh, Rachel Kotup, who is describing how to do a tour of Australia. So she's based in England, but she's actually Australian, and she was um, showing us how to go to the Barrier Reef and what have you. So those are a few uh, tutorials. If you find this one confusing or you don't feel, you know, you, we have enough time to do this properly, then you can always watch their versions to, to describe the same thing. Uh, here's a couple of uh, teachers uh, talking about how to use um, uh, Google Tour Creator in the Languages Classrooms. You've got EdTech Emma here talking about how to use it um, for English and Heidi Trude again talking about virtual reality in the Languages Classrooms. So, so Heidi's been a real inspiration as well as Chris Hart on how to put this together. This is a template which I'm going to share with you later, which is incredible, but I'll talk about that in more detail in a moment. And this is um, another website which allows you to upload uh, 360 photos. This is called ThingLink. And if I just give you a flavor of how this works, if I click on the link now, uh, someone has uploaded a 360 photo of a waterfall in New Zealand. 
And as a result of that, I can now, can you see, I can now move around the 360 photo and it's absolutely stunning. So if you go on to, th go on to ThingLink360 or you do a search on Twitter for ThingLink360, you will find lots of examples of photos that you can use. So I just think that's fabulous for making your, your own content or for using content which other people have made, which you can then use for lang language work. And again, you've got some YouTube clips there describing how to use ThingLink. Uh, this is another idea from a friend of mine in, in England called Vincent Everett, who's a head of languages. And what he's done, he's, he's, done, he's used um, Street View, Google Street View, to make a mystery. And um, it's, he's used the, the town of uh, Vesul, and he's made different clues around the town. He's also embedded audio clips using the uh, free tool, which we covered on the course, called uh, Quicker Conversations. And so by doing that, he was able to embed QR codes into the tour. All the details are available here in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Um, he was able to embed uh, QR codes. You scan the QR codes and then you could hear the old man in the street giving a clue or the young girl in the street giving a clue. And the idea was you need to go from clue to clue and solve the mystery. So all the details about that are there. Very innovative way of using virtual reality, I thought. Okay. Um, here's a, a Padlet, which has lots of ideas around virtual classroom tours and trips, which you can, again, access for free. This was the inspiration of the Tilt webinars uh, put together by a head of languages in Cambridgeshire called Esmeralda Salgado, and lots of the community um, added content to that Padlet. And let's go back a sec. Okay, so let me just, uh, if I click exit now, and I'm just going to show you this all live. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Google Tour Creator. Okay, so it's coming up like this, and you click Get Started. Okay. Okay, thank you for the feedback, uh, Violetta. Right, so if I now click Templates, now that I'm in Google Tour Creator, you can see that you've got all these different uh, examples of things that people have made already. So for example, if I click here now on the same one we looked at before, the seven wonders of the world, what will happen is that will now be copied to my tours. Okay, now, so you've got the image here and you've got the title and you've got a description. And then underneath, you can see that you've got, for example, the Taj Mahal, You've got the Great Wall of China and what have you. Now you can see here, I can now delete this scene if I want to, just from the template, not from the original, um, or the copy, I mean. I can click on the three dots here. I can uh, change the order of the scenes, et cetera, et cetera. So by doing that, I can customize uh, the content, which is already there. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to actually create something from scratch. So to do that, what I do is I click New Tour. Okay. Right, so I'm going to put in Tour of Lithuania. Okay, now I need a photograph, so I'm going to go to a new uh, tab, and I'm going to use my favorite uh, place for finding photographs, which is called Photos for Class, which is um, a directory of free um, images, which are royalty-free, so you're legally allowed to use them. I'm going to do a search for Lithuania, and let's see what comes up. Okay, so we've got different pictures coming up. Oh, I love this one. I'm going to click this. So I'm going to click download and click uh, say. Actually, let's give it a name if I call it Lithuania One. Like that. Let me just copy that and click save. Right, so there it is. I've just done that. Now I go back to Tour Creator. And here it says cover photo. But literally, all I have to do is drag that image. Can you see? and it goes straight in. There we are, lovely. That reminds me of uh, going along the beach at Palanga. So this is an example tour of Lithuania. Okay, yep, and then you click create. Now you can see here it says, using this tour in Google Expeditions, to guide this tour, make sure you're signed in with the same Google account that you use for Google Expeditions. And if you do that, 
it means that the tour that you make in Google Tour Creator will appear in Google Expeditions. It just automatically transfers across in a couple of minutes. Right, let's click Create. And there we are, and we've got our first place we're going to go to. Now, uh, Inga, who came on the course uh, with me recently, she very kindly sent me a set of different places I could include within this tour, for which I'm very grateful. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna put in the first place. I, apologies if I mispronounce this, but um, I'm gonna put in Nida in Lithuania. So I'm searching for it here. There we are. Now we've got uh, this coming up as the, uh, the, 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 the street view image. And you can see the bottom right here, it says add scene. Now I can move this around if I want to. Oh wow, look at that. That's amazing. Let me just do, uh, yeah, let me click here, add scene. Okay, so now I'm going to give the title for this scene, which I'm gonna call Nida. And uh, here you've got two options. You've got add ambient audio. What that does is it means it loops whenever um, uh, you go to the scene. So you can hear the audio, but it loops all the time. Or you can click here, which is add scene narration, and that will play as soon as you go to the scene, but it will only play once, okay? So let me show you how you can do this. If I go to a new tab again, and I go to online voice recorder, online voice recorder, okay, and I can record some audio. This is the first scene in my tour of Lithuania. This is the beautiful place known as Nida. Okay, so that's my audio. I'm now going to move the beginning and the end like this and click save. Okay, I'm now going to post in here and I'm gonna call it Lithuania one and it's an MP3 file. So I click save, there we are. And I'll go back to tour creator and I'm gonna click on this one. So just to be very clear, the scene narration only plays once, whereas the uh, add, audio, um, add ambient audio, it then loops. So I'm gonna click here, and I'm gonna drag and drop this MP3 file here. I can listen back to it like this. This is the first scene in my tour of Lithuania. This is the beautiful place known as Nida. Okay, then I click add. So that means now, this will now play as soon as I go to this scene. Okay, that's the first scene. I'm now gonna click add scene, bottom left. And now the next place I'm going to go to is uh, Vilnius Old Town. There we are, and I click here. Okay, let's see what comes, oh wow, look at that. Okay, beautiful. Right, so then I click Add Scene. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so now, oh, okay. So now um, I could do the same thing. I could add some scene narration or I could add ambient audio, but I'm gonna click here and add the point of interest. So I'm gonna click here and then I'm going to just write the word man and I'm going to click on uh, uh, this option, the add site narration. So I, I'm gonna record some audio first of all. So let me go back here and go back to the previous page and record, oh, record some more audio, here we go. So what is this man going to do? He is in the old town in Vilnius. Where could he visit? Okay, so you could be asking a question for example. And then I click save. And we'll call it Lithuania 2. There we are, it saves to my browser. Right, so now you can see here, can you see? I've got this little point of interest. So I'm gonna put that right in the middle of his head. And I'm gonna click uh, here, which is add, uh, what's called add site narration. I then drag the audio there and I click add. Perfect, right, let's uh, give this one a title as well. So we'll call it Vilnius Old Town. Okay, oh, there we are. Okay, perfect, right, so then we click Add Scene. Okay, the next place we're going to go is a place called Hill of Crosses.
Okay, which is here. Okay, fantastic. Look at that, amazing. Okay, so add scene and we'll call it Hill of Crosses. Lovely. Okay. So again, we can add um, some audio. If we go back to voice recorder. There we are. This is a famous place in Lithuania called the Hill of Crosses. Okay. There we are. Click save. Save again, there it is, go back to the tour. And then we could then uh, again add a point of interest or we can just click on the add scene narration. So I'm gonna drag and drop that here, click add. And that would now just play when we go to the, uh, go to the page, okay? Right, next one, add scene. The next place we're going to go to is uh, Canave, as I don't know how, if that's how you pronounce it. There we are. Okay, which is here. It's going to load up now. Fantastic. So I don't know if this is a a park of some sort. I hope I've got found the right place. So I now click Add Scene. Again, I go back here. I click uh, Voice Recorder. This is another famous place in Lithuania called Kanave. Okay, again, there we are. There we are. Save. Save. Go back to Tour Creator. Click on here, add scene narration, drag the audio on, click add. Okay, right. Then add scene. Oh, I forgot to uh, title that one. Let's uh, go back a sec. Let's go back here. So uh, let's call it. Oh, there we are. Perfect. Then add scene. Right, the next place is P A N E M U N I U Regional Park which is here. Okay. So again, we can choose the, uh, the orientation of the picture. I'm just going to keep it like this. I think add scene. Okay. Record some audio. This is a famous regional park in Lithuania. Okay, there we are. Save. There we are. Go back to Tour Creator. Uh, let's have a let's have this picture there. There we are. And then uh, again, I could add a point of interest. The other thing I could do as well is I could actually add. Um, an image. If I were to go to, for example, uh, a website like flaticon.com, which is another, another directory of um, images you're allowed to use, and I put in a search like walking, for example, let's see what comes up. Just wait for it to load. Okay, so we've got different uh, icons that are coming up here. Let's imagine we wanted to have this one here. Okay, and I can click PNG free download that's going to download there we are it's downloading now save there we are i go back to to a creator and this time i can click add point of interest so again i'm going to say man walking i'm going to cl uh, click on the image option this time if i just move that in the place i want it to go right where the doorway is click on the image option drag the man's picture here as you can see click add 
my picture is now there and I'm there we are can you see I can make that the man smaller quite cool then I can also click on the add site narration option and I can drag the audio here and click add there we are perfect and then we'll call this uh right, let me just do that again so p-a-n-e m-u-n i-a-i -I, regional park uh click add scene the next one we're going to do uh is the last one a-u-k i'm not going to try and pronounce this either a-u-k-s-t-a-i-t-i-j-a -A -A, national park Okay, and that's going to come in now. Hopefully, in a minute, or maybe it's not going to. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not going to appear. This one. Let's just see what happens if I click Add Scene. Right, I think this one's not being recognised, so we'll we'll leave that one. That's fine. So what I'm going to do now is go back to my presentation, and I'm going to go to here, and just click on Present, and you can see here there's this template. I'm just going to show you live now how this works. So if I click here and I click here, which says click on this link to make your own copy, right? So I do that and I click make a copy. So this is the genius of Chris Hart that I talked about a moment ago, who I talked about a moment ago. So he's created this slide and what it allows you to do is it allows you to add in different um, uh, images into the slide. So I'm going to click on uh, the image option here, insert image, upload from computer. I'm now, in fact, let me, before I do that, let me just see if I can just drag and drop. I can probably just drag and drop. Can I just drag and drop? Yeah, I can just drag and drop. Excellent. Right. So I'm now just literally dragging and dropping. And you have to make sure that the images that you add are between these two lines here, this line and this line. So let's add another image, which is this one. Like that. Okay. And then I'm also going to add a text box. So I click insert text box and I'm going to quickly draw a little frame. And I'm going to say, I love Lithuania. Okay. Now you can see that the text is absolutely tiny. That's because this slide is huge. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this very, very big. Let's start off with 96, as you can see. Let's go for 200. Let's go for even bigger. Let's try 300. No, that's too big. Let's try 250. Oh, still too big. Let's try 240. Oh, still too big. Okay, let's go. just go for 200. There we are. Right. So that's that's it. That's all I have to do. So you could, you could use this, for, for example, for children's artwork. Put their artwork here writing text here, whatever you would like. I'm now going to click here where it says area of distortion and I'm going to press delete. So all I've got is this, but you, mu you must make sure it's between the, the two lines. Then I click file and I click download and I choose uh, PNG here, PNG. Okay, that will now download. There we are. There it is. And I go back to tour creator and I go back to uh yeah add scene and this time i'm going to click on the upload option right and i'm going to drag and drop that picture into the upload option now it doesn't look cool here but it will do in a minute so i click add scene okay and then here where it says untitled scene i will say 360 photo and now again, I'm going to add in uh, ambient noise, which means it will it will play as a loop. So I go back here, go here, voice recorder, and I'm going to record the following. I love Lithuania. Okay, so there we are, there we are. But this could be a child describing their piece of artwork, for example, in the target language. Click save. There it is. Lithuania 6, I think that is. Click Save. Go back to Tour Creator. Click uh, the narration, the, sorry, the add ambient audio, which means it's going to loop. 
drag this on here and click add. Right, we've done it. Phew, right, now we click publish. Um, I normally say make your uh, link unlisted. It's up to you, but I normally make it unlisted and I click publish. Right, so now I can, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to post this in the chat for you. But I'm now going to show you on the screen. So if I click view tour, this is the, my tour of Lithuania for you. So we're going to wait, wait for it to load up. The other thing that you have to do is here where the cog is, you have to click on that and you need to cl uh, click on turn narration on. This is the first scene in my tour of Lithuania. This is the beautiful place known as Nida. Yeah, can you see? And I can hear the audio now. And then go on to the next scene. And now, can you see? You can see the man's head. <laughs> I click on that. What is this man going to do? He is in the old town in Vilnius. Where could he visit? Okay, next scene. This is a famous place in Lithuania called the Hill of Crosses. Okay, so that one was the narration, so it played automatically as soon as I went to the scene. Next one. This is another famous place in Lithuania called Kanave. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Apologies if I didn't. Next one. Right, so for this one, can you see here, you've got the little image there. If I click on the image, this is a famous regional park in Lithuania. There we are. And then the last one, if I go here, right, can you see we're actually embedded within our own picture? That's just crazy, isn't it? Look at that. Now, if I turn on uh, the audio, so I need to, oh, hang on, not go full screen. Uh, hang on, just give me a second. Let's go back a sec. Uh, hang on, what have I done? 360. Uh, let me just refresh the page. All right, that's fine. I then click here and I'll click on turn ambient audio on. And I'll now go to the last scene. I love Lithuania. I love Lithuania. I love Lithuania. I love Lithuania. I love right. Lithuania. Quickly stop that, otherwise it'll, go, it'll make you go crazy. So I hopefully you can see how that's worked. Now, if I were to now go to the Google Expeditions app, my tour would then appear there. And there we are. So let me go back to my presentation. Thank you ever so much for bearing with me. And that's how you make a Google tour. It's fantastic. And just a thought, if you found this interesting and you'd like me to help you further, with remote teaching ideas or hybrid teaching ideas, do get in touch. Here are 18 example sessions, which I would love to uh, love for you to have a look at. And if you'd like to have a look at this and uh, contact me about doing some further webinars to support uh, you individually or as a school or as a district, then let me know. And um, I'm gonna quickly give you a quick overview of the program that we did over 10 different uh, sessions of three hours each. If I click on this link right now, uh, you can see we did lots and lots of different sessions. The first one starting in September was like an overview of ideas around sort of screencasting and um, the, uh, the Tilt webinars. We went on to then ideas around collaboration. So we looked at things like Seesaw, Wheel of Names, Socrative, uh, Quizzes, which is a fantastic um, uh, tool for interactive activities. We looked at Padlet and Flipgrid and Jamboard for more ideas around collaboration. We then looked at some... Um, self-marking tests such as Mentimeter, um, Quicker Conversations, which I've, I've already mentioned in the chat, uh, Moat, which I know is being covered later on uh, in this uh, conference, uh, looking at other ideas around audio, inserting audio into Google Slides, voice typing, making um, a podcast. I know, again, um, one of the teachers that came on the course is, is talking about podcasting. That's one of my favorite things in the world, so I really particularly like that session. Um, Adobe Spark Video and making uh, book creator ebooks. Uh, some ideas around mobile apps as well. So looking at cross-platform apps, which work really nicely on iOS and on Android. And then we ha basically had the like the planning session, and then the lesson plan uh, session, whereby people presented 
the lesson plans. And then this was obviously supposed to be a face-to-face -face event in Lithuania. But as I've said already, I'm very grateful to Astorija for making this possible, uh, this conference as a virtual event as opposed to a face-to-face -face event. And then I'm just very quickly going to give you an idea of some of the eBooks that people made. So I created a Padlet and people posted their eBooks onto the Padlet. So if I just click on the link right now to show you this live. And I'm going to, there we are. So you can see here, I've made a column here to uh, help people put their work together. And I'm going to, there we are. I'm going to click on Inga's if that's okay. Inga's one absolutely blew me away. I thought it was fabulous. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but just to give you a flavor of what, um, what people came up with on the course. So it's just learning now. So Book Creator, if you haven't seen it before, it's an interactive uh, tool for making eBooks. Um, you can make up to 40 books for free, which is incredible. So you've got some audio here. If I click on the audio. Don't, don't open the book. Yet, look at me. I am wearing a mask in case you haven't noticed. So I would like to know your ideas about today's lesson. Let me know about them in menti.com. Fantastic. So uh, uh, Inga was using menti.com as a way of crowdsourcing ideas from her students. And again, you can access that via the QR code. Uh, she's got lots of fantastic multimedia here. She's using uh, Loom as a way of recording a video. Again, just give you a quick flavor. Well, hello, class. Oh, should I take this mask off? I look a bit scary in it, don't I? Well, just like Greeks did several hundred years ago. But when you think it was back then, not now. Anyway, I was just looking at Mentimeter data that you have produced so kindly. And um, no, we're not going to talk about uh, coronavirus this time. And no, we are not going to talk about Halloween, though it's coming. I know, but not this time. But what we are going to talk about, it's Greece and the Greeks. Ancient Greece, in fact. And what do you think? A mask has to do with ancient Greece. So fantastic. Let me know. So fantastic. So Inga is using multimedia to ask a question there. Uh, just fabulous. Uh, she's got lots. <laughs> she's got lots of other examples of her creativity, which I absolutely love. Um, yeah, some more ideas here. Just fabulous stuff. So that's giving you a little flavour of some of the things that the uh, the teachers who kindly spent. 30 hours with me uh, in the course, um, what they produced. So without further ado, I'm just going to share the presentation with you, if that's okay. And there we are. So I'll just put this in the chat as well for you, if, you're, if you want to access this. Um, so it's is.gd forward slash VIKC conference. And again, a huge thank you to Astridia for all her work. These things don't just happen. Uh, putting together the uh, or helping me organise the, the the course, um, putting on this virtual conference to the British Council for their generous funding uh, for this as well. I really really appreciate it, and I would love to come back and do either another virtual session or hopefully um, the opportunity of visiting Lithuania again. Um, as you can see, I genuinely do love the country. It's amazing, and it's been such a privilege for me to learn from you all and to to share this experience so I'm, I'm hoping that you found for example the tour creator example really useful and it's giving you enough ideas to try it out yourself in your own classroom and if, if you got if you get stuck with any of these ideas i've given you my email address you can contact me i'm more than happy to to help as well and just to remind you these are my contact details here uh, on the screen at joe dell on twitter and just joe dell at talk21.com Enjoy the rest of your conference. Unfortunately, I'm very busy. I won't be able to watch um, live, but I will certainly catch up on the recording. And I'll now hand back to Astorija. Thank you everyone, ever so much, everybody.
Thank you so much, Jail. We are so honored to, to see you once again and, and watch you and listen to you and learn from you. So I do hope that's not the end of our meetings and I do hope that we will meet either online or in Palanga again or maybe in another great resort of uh, Palanga to show you more about Lithuania. Okay, thank so thank you once again. Really, uh, we got so many new ideas uh, and uh, just to make our activities in the lesson nice and uh, more engaging and uh, efficient.